Hello everyone, I'm Red Hill Eagle and this is Learn to Play TEW 2020 with ECW. This is episode 5, pre-booking the pay-per-view. When I pre-book my pay-per-views, I use one of these. It's just a little notebook, just a standard notebook that you can buy for you know a couple of quid. And I've got loads of these. <laughs> I've got uh, <laughs> notebooks all over the place full of saves that I'm doing for TEW. Most of them I've wasted. I've used a couple of pages and then just scrapped the save or whatever. Um, but this is what I do. I use a physical notebook and I just find it easier to kind of like navigate through a notebook and then, you know, you can rub out your anything you change. You can sort of look, look ahead. I just find it easier to do that rather than do it in-game. And I can... When I... When I um, a storyline I go ahead a couple of months or a few months however long I want the storyline to last and I, I put in when the storyline match is ending and then I work backwards and put in another couple of matches on pay-per-views I'll show you all that when we come to to build our own storylines uh, but yeah we're going to use this notebook for pre-booking our pay-per-view there's another reason I use a notebook which is actually the initial reason I started using notebooks is that I I had a tendency of double booking people so I would pre-book a pay-per-view and I'd come to the pay-per-view and I'd, hang on that guy's already wrestled and I find it easier on a notebook to just look down and see who I've already written down you know I've already written that guy down he's already got a match so okay forget him let's move on to someone else I know you can see all that on the pre-booking screen but sometimes if you've got multiple man matches it, it cuts some off and you don't necessarily see and I, I just find it easier for me to use a notebook so let's pre-book our first pay-per-view now for the first one i'm not going to go overboard with with storylines i'm not going to do too much building because we're just starting out i just want to sort of show you how i do it so i generally i look at what we've got um from a perception point of view. So all our major stars should be on the show, right? I mean, you don't have to have them on every single pay-per-view. It's nice, of course. But we've got a small roster. We will have them all on. So Bam Bam Bigelow, he he needs a match, okay? And what I tend to do is I look at anyone who I want to push from lower down the card. Now, Bam Bam Bigelow is in a hot storyline with Shane Douglas at the moment. So I won't have him... Um, I have a job to anyone lower or, you know, I, I, I think I think for our first pay-per-view, it'd be nice to have Bam Bam Bigelow take on Shane Douglas. They they fought at uh, the previous pay-per-view, which was obviously pre-game for us. So maybe we'll have a trilogy of matches. We'll have another match at the December pay-per-view and then we'll have the story ending match at the January pay-per-view. So I'm going to write in the notebook and this is how I write it Douglas over Bigelow and then I just put a little dash and if I can fit it all in I'm gonna have so keep heavyweight so Douglas will keep the heavyweight title in this match but I also want Francine to interfere because I'm thinking our, our blow off match in January can be a cage match so it's kind of like a situation where, you know, you only won because your manager helped you, blah, blah, blah. Okay, next next match, you know, we're in a cage. No one can get in, no one can get out, no interference. So let's let's do that. And then I look down and I see, right, okay, Sabu. Well, actually, before we go to Sabu, let's have a look at some of the guys that we were looking to push, okay? So, Al Snow. Al Snow we'd like to push. He's recognisable, he's a heel, so he needs to preferably beat a babyface further up the card. Now, it's going to be tough because there's not many. We could have him beat Jerry Lynn, but we also want to push Jerry Lynn. We could have him beat New Jack. But I'm going to take a really big risk here, and I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to have him beat Terry Funk. Now, he's not going to like it. He's not going to like it. But we have set out that he's going to job. 
If we lose Terry Funk, we lose Terry Funk. Okay, he's 53 years old. You know, he's either got to work for us and help other people get over, or he's no good to us, really. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, Terry Funk's going to be our future star. No, he's not. He's 53 years old. So let's pop that in. And I'll just, you know, just snow over Funk. Okay. So we've got Douglas over Bigelow, Snow over Funk. We also want to get Jerry Lynn over. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have him beat anyone higher up the card because I think initially just just getting a win on the pay per view will help pop anyway. So I'm gonna have him beat our new guy. Kid Cash. So Jerry Lynn is a face. And Kid Cash is a heel. So yeah, fine. So we'll just pop in there. Jerry Lynn over Kid Cash. Okay. Now I was off screen, I was looking at our roster a little bit, and I was looking at um possible future world champions because Shane Douglas is our champion and he's you know he's over and he's good. But I prefer to have face champions as my big long-term guys, as my big long-term champions. And I was looking at the roster, and I was kind of like, well, who who could be that guy? And I picked out Taz. He's 30, he's a middleweight, he's a baby face, he's got a legendary gimmick. He's decent. He's very decent. Star quality isn't awful. He's got charisma. Microphone could do with a bit of work, but charisma's good. So I was thinking, right, well, we need to get the television title off him. How are we going to do that? Who is going to win that? And I thought, well, Rob Van Dam, you know. But then I looked, you know, 26 years old. Probably just a tad too young for us to, to, to put a belt on him. I mean, yes, the, te the television title, maybe you could. But I just thought, no, let's let's just give him another couple of years. Maybe even just, maybe even just a year. And then we'll think about putting the TV title on him. Because, you know, by, by then, he, he, it might not work out. And he might jump straight to the heavyweight at the age of 30, 31, whatever. I know I'm thinking very long term here. But, just, you know, stick with me. So who's going to take the belt off of Taz? So I looked at our kind of undercard a little bit. And I thought of a couple of people. And I picked out New Jack. Where is he here? New Jack. Now he's well known. So Taz isn't going to like losing to New Jack. But well, he, he probably won't. He might accept it. I could talk to him. I could talk to Taz. Let's do it. Um, career, no, sorry, it's booking. How would you feel about losing at an event to New Jack? I would have no complaints. Wow. Okay, we could just have New Jack beat Taz. But but what I was thinking, when I sort of looked at this off camera, I was thinking, let's um, put another guy in there. We'll have a triple threat. And the other guy would take the loss. And that other guy was going to be Tommy Rich. So we'd have a triple threat. But now that Taz is willing to put New Jack over, and it, it's not really about putting New Jack over, it's about just getting the TV title off of Taz, because I want him to be a future world champion. Now, I was looking at our title holders, and I did see that... Shane Douglas has only held the title for nine days. So I don't want to take it off him yet. But by the same token, I don't want Taz to win it immediately after losing the TV title. So maybe we give it three or four months. So take take the TV title off of Taz now. Three or four months, he's he's heavyweight champion. Okay. I, I did have in the back of my mind that Shane Douglas, look, he's already a four-time champion and he's only 33, I think. So, 
preferably this should be a long term reign so you know he doesn't end up being a seven or eight time world champion I think we're going to have to grin and bear it we can't help what's happened before we've taken over can't help that he's already a four time world champion I'm going to stick to my original plan though because put a triple threat on the card gives the fans something different to see so let's write down here then New Jack over Taz and Rich and then a little dash win TV okay then I thought well before getting too ahead of myself with singles matches we need some tag team action and I was thinking of our uh, champions FBI Tracy Smothers and little Guido I'm, I know I'm probably pronouncing this wrong please someone correct me if it's if it's anything different who are they going to defend against well these guys are heels so preferably a face team doesn't have to be but preferably and I looked down and you know what we actually haven't got many face teams at all we've got John Cronus and New Jack but New Jack is going to win the TV title so the only one I could think of really were hardcore chair swinging freaks Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney but they're not going to win it um, the defending champions are going to successfully retain so we'll just pop in there Smothers stroke Guido over Axel and Mahoney this is just a note for me you don't have to write the full name you don't have to do anything flash it's just notes for me then the little dash keep tag uh, I want another tag team match now again we're very short on babyface teams and the only other babyface team is this team and New Jack's out of it so we're going to have to have a heel versus heel it's not too much of an issue in our product we put the uh, face heel divide as uh, loose, loosely enforced so we won't get such a big penalty so I was looking at the teams I was thinking well let's have the Dudleys on the pay-per-view yeah and who are they going to come up against and I would actually really like to get Lance Storm on the card even if he's going to suffer a loss, because I think we'll have the Dudleys win this. I'd just like to get him on the card, really. So we'll pop that in there. We'll just put Dudleys over Candido and Storm. Okay. Sorry, I'm just thinking here. Then we go, yeah, I was thinking about having another tag team match, but I think there might be too many. I have also, what I did off camera, just to <laughs> just to uh, divert our attention, I did change the TV show to an hour. I don't think we've got a big enough roster to do an hour and a half just yet. I mean, we could get away with it, but I think in the long run we'll probably be repeating a lot of matches. And I changed all the pay-per-views to just two hours. And what I did, what you can do, rather than go into each individual one and modify them, you can go to standard standardized lengths and only standardize the lengths of the event. It doesn't touch TV. That option isn't there for TV. So you go to go to any of the events, standardize lengths, and then you just choose however long you want them all, and they'll all change to that time. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing. Who else do we want on the card that's not on there yet? Um, so we've got Bigelow Sabu. Okay. Sabu, he's a heel. We definitely want him on the card, preferably to get a victory as well. And I was thinking, let's have another main event match. I could put him up against someone lower down, but we are kind of running out of options a little bit now. But what we do is, I think, so it's between the Sandman and Tommy Dreamer, really, isn't it? But I think I'd like the Sandman to keep to get to get some momentum. So when we put him on the card, I think. We'll give him a victory. So I'm going to want Sabu to beat Tommy Dreamer. So Sabu over Dreamer. Okay. So Sandman, I want him to get a victory. And I think the best, the best one here, well, the only one really, if we're going to keep, well, want. RVD on the card. I could put in another match, but I think how many have we got? One, two, three, four, six, seven. So this will be the eighth match. And I think for a two hour show, that's probably quite reasonable. So we could put RVD in another short match against someone, but 
But I think, again, RVD is quite young. So although we want to push him, I don't think I want him as a major star just yet. So we'll give him a loss, and it's got to be to our other major star that we haven't used, the Sandman. So the Sandman over RVD. And what I do as well, if, if I want something specific to happen, like a disqualification or a count out, I'll just put a dash there and I'll just write CO or DQ, whatever. Um, but we'll just have this one as a... Well, we can decide at the time. We can, we can decide to make it a DQ or a count out, but I'm not specifically looking at that just yet. So that's our pay-per-view written down. And I know I've not double booked anyone, so I can look down this list very nice and easily. And then I go and transfer it into the game. So, pre-booking. Now, I do this for pay-per-views. I don't do this. Sometimes I'll do it for TV. If there's something I definitely want and I don't want to forget that I want it, then I will pre-book something for TV. Shane Douglas, I always put champions first over Bam Bam Bigelow. So, I always put champions first, even if they're losing. And we'll, we'll have this one go 15, okay? We'll try and get a world-class score. I, it won't happen with a small company, but, you know, let's, let's put it to 15. Uh, we're going to have Shane Douglas get the win. We are going to have it open, scripted, tainted, so he'll cheat, but he also gets help, manager interference finish. And then pre-book that. Uh, and so it's, then we've got the triple threat, the, the other title match. So pre-book. Got a lot of defaults here. I'm going to have to change all these, I think. I'm going to have to change all these defaults, which I'll do off camera. Um, so triple threat. Where's 1v1v1? There we go. Taz is the current... TV champion, and he's going to beat, sorry, he's going to lose to New Jack and Tommy Rich. We'll put Tommy Rich in first, New Jack, doesn't really matter what order you do it in. Uh, let's go for a nice 14 minutes, might get away with a bit longer. World Television, and um, we're having New Jack win this. Have it as an open match, scripted. Um, we'll have it clean, but also we wanted Tommy Rich to take the loss, even though Taz would put New Jack over. Oh, that's Tommy Dreamer. Oh, don't want that. Hold on, hold on. That could have been a nasty little surprise, couldn't it? You're joking. Why is he down as a wrestler then? Um, okay. These things happen, guys. These things happen. Let me just have a quick look at Tommy Rich then. Right. Well, his contract is obviously just as a manager, but... Well, isn't that annoying? Um, I wonder if we can either get him to... Uh, career... Yeah, okay, so he's a wrestler now as well. Brilliant. And it's still saying that they're unavailable. This is, this, I don't get this with the game sometimes. Okay, change of plan then. New Jack's just going to beat Taz. And this is why I write in pencil, guys. So, as I say, then I go in and I calculate how many minutes we've got of wrestling time. And I usually make a note. Um, I've, I've made a couple of notes here of the wrestlers I want. I know I want to push. Um, and then but, but what I do is I go in, so uh, events. And we've got, so we've got two hour events and we need 75% of that to be wrestling time. So work out what 75% of 120 is. That's 90. 90 means 
wrestling time, 120 mins total. TV, we've got 60 minutes and it's 75% again. 45 mins wrestling time, 120 mins total. Okay, so we need 90 minutes of wrestling time. So, looking at that, we probably could afford to have a couple more longer matches. Um, or the matches we've already got, make them a bit longer. Or we can uh, add in a couple more matches. Let's see where we are. I'll, I will speed through all this. It's, you know, so, oh, sorry, 90 minutes. Okay. Okay, it looks like I totally miscalculated. We don't have as long as we thought. So this is 17. So, yeah, we need to gain some minutes somewhere. So we've got to make a couple of matches even shorter. I've managed to get it down to exactly 90 minutes. It doesn't have to be exact. Of course, it doesn't. You can have a minute here or there, but I, I was way out, so I had to make some adjustments. Kid Cash and Jolyn's going to have to be pre-show. I don't think you can choose that on the pre-booking note, so we just have to make sure. I made Sabu Tommy Dreamer a shorter match, and I made the Terry Funk Al Snow just a five-minute match. That should really put Al Snow over. So that's December to Dismember. Pre-booked. Let's skip ahead a day. We're getting closer to our first TV show. That's it for episode 5. Join me in episode 6 to finally get round to booking a show. We'll have the first episode of ECW Hardcore TV under our stewardship. If you've enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe. Please leave me with any comments and questions. And I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.